In this conference, there will be didactic proposals with the aim of introducing readers, teachers and students to works by women authors who support gender equality. For the second cycle of nursery education, it is recommendable to read Arturo y Clementina by Adela Turin and Nela Bosnia. In this illustrated book, there is a story of a couple of turtles and the female turtle decides to split up with her husband because he's putting too much weight on her. He's always telling her that she's good at anything, that she should stop painting or anything she likes. And in the end, she becomes independent. She leaves him and he she starts to make her dream come true. She leaves her home place, her comfort zone, and starts to travel. I think that this is a very good book to show children that when you have a toxic person who is avoiding you to move forward, it is better to leave the person alone and to be independent and strong. For primary students, I would recommend Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. I worked with this short novel with students when I was working at Centro de Estudios Superiores Don Bosco and we analyzed the novel and we realized that Astrid Lindgren portrayed the model of a girl who is masculine and anarchic and the question is what would you think that society could think about a girl who behaves this way? From my point of view she's strong and courage and brave and she's a good role model for girls so that they do, need, do not need to depend on somebody or behave in a feminine way, which is interesting because Pippi is the kind of character which shows that there is not a gender difference because she could be a girl or a boy. She would behave the same way. And this would agree with the idea of Judith Butler or of queer theory and a world in which gender is a social construction and gender is only a label. Pippi Longstocking is a free girl. In the case of The Hunger Games by Susan Collins, this is a novel that I would recommend to read with secondary students, as I did with my high school students. The Hunger Games is a trilogy of dystopian science fiction and adventure novels. Katniss Everdeen is the female warrior, the protagonist, who is not hypersexualized like other popular female heroines like Clara Croft, Catwoman or Wonder Woman. Everdeen is a powerful and strong woman. She's often shy and self-confident and imperfect. Nevertheless, her imperfections make her a more believable character. Surprisingly, his male counterpart, Pita, who could be considered his anima in Jungian terms, is more sensitive, inconsistent, and less brave than her. She's apparently more masculine than him, having the features that have been conventionally considered masculine. The author might be trying to show that the traditional idea of the hero as the bravest one and the female character as passive is no longer believable due to the fact that nowadays men are also as passive and, and also they can be responsible for the family, like Pita taking care of Katniss' family, while she fights and protects him when he needs help. Jan Shinoda Bolen, psychiatrist and Jungian analyst, following the ideas of the archetypes and collective unconsciousness by Jun, believes that the archetypes in psychology imply behavioral instinctive patterns comprised in the conscious and collective. Shinoda Bolen, in Goddesses in Every Woman, chose the character of Katniss Everdeen as the model of an Artemis goddess of the hunt and the moon. I think that this is a good model for girls because she's brave and strong and 
On the one hand, she's masculine because she's powerful and she's a warrior, but on the other hand, she doesn't reject being a mother. And to finish, I will explain Rupi Carr's poetry as a good example of a book that can be read by university students, Milk and Honey and also The Sun or Her Flowers by Rupi Carr. She explains trauma and how to heal. In her book, which is separated by the hurting, the loving, the breaking and the healing, she explains how a girl feels when she's sexually abused and when she has an alcoholic father and she feels invisible. There is also an illustration here of, of the bottle, which is uh, similar to, to a penis. And in this poetry book, she explains with illustrations, this Instagrammer, how somebody can use therapy to have self-development and self-esteem. In the preface, we read, My heart woke me crying last night. How can I help? I begged my heart, said, write a book. The message is that poetry comes from somebody's heart. There's a personalization of the heart and a dissociation of heart and the speaker that can be cured by writing as a therapy. This is what Rupi Carr does. She challenges readers to use writing as a therapy. And also in her poetry, she criticizes patriarchy and she shows a post-colonial feminist view. And also she uses also ecofeminism because she always supports other women. For example, in this poem, we all move forward when we recognize how resilient and striking the women around us are. So Rupi Kaas is a feminist writer supporting other women and supporting nature and natural life in women and women's body. She's an ecofeminist. I would like to conclude saying that it is important to read female works when we are teaching students because they need to know women's world. According to Equitive Feminine Theory by Ellen Sissus, there is a different kind of writing that women use. It is a kind of writing in which there are interruptions, silences, puns, and new images. It is incomprehensible and inconsistent because it belongs to the pre-linguistic stage, which subverts all significations of the phallocentric language. Here there is a debate. Do women write like men or different? Do we believe in écriture féminine? I think so. I think that feminine writing is quite different because of the use of the free play of meanings, which is more semiotic. Um, but at the same time, it is interesting to realize that women can write in a different way. And when a writer writes, it doesn't matter if it's a woman or a man, because the person can write in, in both ways. I also believe in Virginia Woolf's theory of the androcentric of the sorry of the androgynous mind because if we use an androgynous mind like Samuel Coleridge's romantic poet said we can use both our feminine and masculine writing so I think it is interesting to get to know feminine writing and female production and female works because we have to support women writing and women's publications because in the academia men are more read than women. It is important to read women literature. Thank you very much for watching.
Bye-bye.